we're going to continue working on this 79cc Predator small engine. Uh, this is the reassembly process, so continue watching to see what we're doing in this one. So we're getting to the point where this engine is fairly close to back together. The bottom end of the engine is all together, the flywheel is on, the cylinder head is on, and we need to do some valve train. So in this particular engine, uh, whoever put this together last did not really take the part right. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, separate these adjustment bolts. And once I do that, the lock nut and the adjustment nut will come off of this rock run. I'm just going to set all of that off to the side as one, one assembly. I'm also going to do that to the other one. And now that I have these studs off on their own, I'm going to take the pushrod guide plate. Actually, in this case, the pushrods are already through the guide plate. And they, there we go. So now I'm going to take the pushrod guide plate. I guess I'll put it numbers up. I don't know that it really matters which way this goes, and I did not see which way it came apart. Or I didn't pay attention. You can go through my other video and see if I'm putting it back together the way it came apart. But based on the rest of the engine, just because it came apart that way, it doesn't mean it was right. Okay, so I'm threading in my rocker arm studs and holding the guide plate in place. Oh, look at that. Swell. Just going to take kind of a guess at it and say 80 inch pounds on these. Okay, so those are now locked in. We'll take our push rods. And those will sit down into the lifter, so if you pick it up and look at it, you can kind of see around it. Okay, so those sit down into the actual lifter in the block. That's a very important part. If you don't do this, the engine won't run. And you're going to hear that a lot because there's a lot of this stuff involved in this step that determines whether or not the engine runs. Okay. All right, so now we've got our push rods installed. We'll take our rocker arm and the adjustment nut Thread this down onto the setup here. While we're doing this, you've got to pay attention that you get the push rod into the rocker arm. All right. Now that we've got both of those kind of set, we're going to take our adjustment nuts and not actually bring them down to where we're at yet, but just kind of bring them into place a little bit, put them on the stud, and we're actually going to roll the engine over. I've got these kind of tight, but we need to adjust the valves. Um, so what I mean by adjust the valves is we are going to set the, the space in between the tip of the valve and this rocker arm. Now there are no specs for this engine, so I'm just kind of going off of what I know small engines tend to be in the general range of, and we are going to set this to three thousandths. It might be a little bit tight, it might be a little bit loose, but it should be close enough to work. So as we roll this engine over, we, you can watch these rocker arms move. So that one just popped a little bit, now it's coming back up. The intake valve is opening. Now the exhaust valve is closed, or the, the intake valve closed, the exhaust valve opened. 
we continue to rock it around and pay attention to that what this one does that one pops just a little bit at a certain point and that is because it has a compression release section so as you're pull starting this that valve pops open a little bit and bleeds compression off so it's easier for you to to pull as of right now it's now closed so as we roll this engine over and i'm actually rolling it backwards which shouldn't which is going to actually make this one a little bit easier to, to set. So turn this one backwards. Now that the now I've got the intake valve wide open, that means that the exhaust valve is on the base circle of the cam and we can set it. So I will take our three thousandths of an inch, 0 .003 feeler gauge, and I'm going to insert it between the tip of the valve and the rocker arm. Now as I snug this down, the drag you feel on the feeler gauge lets you know if it's working or not. So like right now it's bending a little bit. That's probably just a little bit on the tight side, but pretty good. So that's set at three thousandths of an inch. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and back it off just a little bit. Because as I tighten this adjustment nut, it is going to tighten the valve back up. So if I check it right now, I'm over three thousandths. Yeah, see, it's nice and loose. It goes in there, but it's way loose. It's not dragging at all. It's just moving free. But as I hold the adjustment nut and tighten down the lock nut, what that has a tendency to do is tighten up our valve lash. So there's still a little bit of play in there. And that is pretty close. It's just a touch on the loose side. So, I'm going to loosen it back up. Bring the adjustment knot just a touch closer. Lock it back down. Now I'm too tight. So I'll back this off again. Okay. Still too tight. All right, so the camera died while I was doing that, but what I was but with these small engines, the valve springs are so weak that you can actually open the valve by hand. It makes them a little bit difficult to check, um, but that's pretty good. You can feel just a light drag on it. It might be a touch over three thousandths. It might be like three and a half, but we're going to call that close enough. So I've got this locked down. I've got the adjustment set. Now I'm going to continue rotating the engine backwards. Watch the intake valve close. The exhaust valve will start to open, and while the exhaust valve is wide open, we will now set the intake valve. Okay, so same process, and I'm not going to talk you through it, I'm just going to do this one. Alright, so the other one when I adjusted it did not change drastically from tight to loose. This one did, and that is very possibly something to do with the fact that it's been used and abused and moved several times. So we'll back it off a little bit extra. Lock it down. Still got play in it this time. And that seems probably a touch on the loose side, but pretty dang good. So we're going to go ahead and leave it there. So we want three thousandths of an inch clearance on both. We're pretty close. Now as we spin this motor over, our valves work and they are set. So at that point, we will take and set this engine upright. And this is one of the last places to get oil when we start the engine. So we're going to take just a little bit of oil 
and uh, run it down over top of the rocker arms and then we're going to spin it over and let it work while holding it upright. Okay, so now our oil is everywhere we need it to be. We can kind of set this back down. Don't do a lot of oil, just a little bit. And we can take our valve cover. Make sure this, like everything else, is nice and clean. Take our valve cover. Reinstall it. These valve cover bolts are just barely beyond finger tight. These have a cork gasket under them. They're a very tiny bolt. If I had a quarter inch drive ratchet here, I would be using it, but I'm using this one because it's here. So those are snug, the valve cover's on. We can actually take our spark plug and at least set it into the hole for now. So that's it for right now. The engine is really starting to get buttoned up. The spark plug has not been tightened yet. We'll do that later. But we have the basically the entire engine together. Up next will be the coil and then the fan shroud and then the carburetor and we're done. So continue on with the next video and we'll keep going.